watching the first in a series of OpenGameArt.org tutorials on pixel art. Um, since we're just getting started today, I'm going to get into uh, how you might choose a pixel editor. Um, I'm just going to come out with the bad news first. Um, in my opinion, there really is no perfect pixel editor that would meet all of my requirements for having every single thing I would want. Um, there are a number of decent choices. All of them I find are kind of lacking in one way or another. Um, so I'm going to go over a set of six potential choices. Um, I'm also going to cover sort of my criteria, and in the end, I will reveal to you which one I like the best. Um, now, this isn't going to mean that it is the best one by any ch by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who disagree with me, and, and that's totally fine. Um, it will not be necessary to use the same program that I am using in order to follow along with the pixel art tutorials that I do because regardless of which editor you, you're using the principles are still going to be the same. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to get started. Um, so first off I'm going to talk about my uh, criteria for choosing a pixel art program. Um, so for me number one is always going to be the, a clean and intuitive interface. Um, I need to be able to sit down and sort of instantly feel like I'm comfortable using a program, um, which means, you know, I, I don't want to be looking around saying, wow, what's this? Why is that over here? Where do I find this thing? It needs to be something that's laid out in a way uh, that I like and I feel comfortable with. Um, now, for everybody, this is going to be different. Um, I have personally spent a lot of time in Photoshop, so things that are laid out more like Photoshop tend to be what I'm more comfortable with. Um, your history as a user of art programs may be different. You may not have a history of using art programs. This might be the first time you've ever really looked into it. Um, in which case, you won't have my biases left over, so uh, your final choice may be different than mine, and you know you certainly can try a bunch of different things, which is a good idea. Um, so, once again, uh, my first criteria is a clean and intuitive interface. interface. Um, secondly, obviously, is a full set of pixel drawing tools. Um, and, you know, I'm talking about that, I just mean kind of the simple stuff. A pencil tool, um, a line drawing tool, perhaps a tool for drawing circles and ovals, polygons, squares, um, eraser, obviously. Uh, a fill tool, um, really not all that much. Um, for, for editing pixel art, you don't really need a lot of the fancy stuff. Um, so a lot of the editors we're going to look at will in some ways be overkill. This doesn't mean that they're not useful for pixel art, but uh, by and large, a lot of editors have more features than you will need as a pixel artist. Um, so cri uh, criteria number three, uh, would be that they have layers. Um, I'm not particularly worried about this because almost every program out there has layers now. Um, I'm not going to really go into it when I look at the different programs because all six of the ones that I'm going to look at have layers. Uh, criteria four is animation tools. And, you know, the, the various programs have animation tools. I find them, in general, to be kind of quirky. Um, this is one that, as a quick spoiler here, I'm going to sort of give up on in the end um, and choose an editor that doesn't really have them uh, because I happen to like the other stuff. So um, it's an important criteria, particularly as you get to animation, but uh, since it's going to be a while until we get to that point um, in this tutorial series, I'm not going to worry about it right now and I'm going to pick something that, that will work well for me in the meantime. Um, and then finally, uh, the last criteria is cost. Many editors are free, many are not. Um, some of them, like Photoshop, you could end up coughing up $30 a month for for the rest of your life. Um, so, you know, cost is a pretty big issue. I don't really expect people watching this tutorial to be able to afford Photoshop. So, quick spoiler, Photoshop will not be my final choice, even though I'm going to go over it. And that's pretty much it. Um, so. Real quick, I'm going to sort of go over what the options are. Um, and then in the end, when I'm done with all this, after I've sort of revealed which one of my favorite is, um, 
uh, I will go over what I would feel would be the perfect pixel art editor, um, which, as I've said, doesn't really exist at the moment. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Um, so the first option I'm looking at is Photoshop. Um, you've all heard of it. Uh, it's by Adobe. Um, it is a big sort of the granddaddy of paint programs. Um, I don't really need to go into it too much because everybody pretty, pretty much knows about Photoshop. Um, the second one I'm going to look at is the GIMP, um, which here it is. Uh, the GIMP is sort of the old open source free software answer to Photoshop. Um, it does a lot of the things that Photoshop does. Uh, and we'll get into this more later. I find the interface a little bit difficult to use sometimes. Um, but uh, we'll talk about the GIMP, what it can do, why it might be a good choice for you. Um, thirdly, uh, I'm going to look at Krita. Um, if you're not familiar with Krita, Krita is the painting program that comes with uh, the Caligra Office Suite. Um, it's also downloadable on its own. Um, it is free and open source, and it is essentially a pretty high-end uh, digital painting program. Um, it doesn't have quite the photo editing capabilities that Photoshop does, but for actual digital painting, I find it's actually a little bit, little bit more comfortable to use. Um, it's designed pretty well. Um, so the next one we'll take a look at is one that most people watching this probably have not heard of. Uh, that is the aptly named open source project Pixel Editor, um, one word. Uh, Pixel Editor is a little program that does pixel art, um, doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, but it has very easily accessible tools that are right there when you need them, and it does not get in your way. Um, it also has some animation tools down at the bottom, which I will cover more later. The next program we'll look at is Graphics Gale. Um, this is a pixel art specific program that has been around for a while. Um, so, and then finally, where is it here? ProMotion is another uh, like graphic scale for pay pixel art specific program. So yeah, let's get started. Um, back to the beginning, Adobe Photoshop. Um, so what does Photoshop have that I like? Uh, well, I find the interface pretty intuitive. Um, and you know, it's really hard to say at this point since I've been using it for quite a while, um, whether I find it intuitive because it's intuitive or because I'm just so used to it. Um, all in all, it looks pretty clean. I find it fairly legible, so even if I'm trying to do something that I haven't done before, I usually don't have a whole lot of trouble with it. Photoshop also has the advantage of being good for things other than pixel art, which, you know, if, if you're a general artist, which many pixel artists are, uh, you might be into digital painting, you might be into photo editing. Um, Photoshop is very good for those things. Um, one other advantage Photoshop has is that it's got animation tools. Um, now, I don't find the animation tools in Photoshop to be particularly intuitive, although they are better than some. Um, they're also worse than others. Uh, the downside of Photoshop is that it is horribly, horribly expensive. Um, where the second most expensive application in this list is about 70 bucks. Um, for the privilege of using the current version of Photoshop, you will pay about $30 a month. Um, so after three months of using Photoshop, you've now spent more on a pixel art application than you would have if you'd chosen any of these others. Um, and frankly, if you're just going to use it for pixel art, I do not feel that it's worth it. I would not recommend buying it. So, uh, having looked at Photoshop, uh, we will come and take a look at the GIMP. Um, so the GIMP, as I said, is sort of the open source answer to Photoshop. Um, I find that with GIMP, the interface is kind of a lot more clunky. Um, you know, well, take for instance what I'm doing here. Um, I'm adjusting this value. Now I can't even adjust it because I, I'm over the number. So let's say I change this to 50. Um, but then when I go to adjust it, I have to move the mouse way over the place. When I get to the end of the screen, I can't adjust it anymore. Right? This is just sort of one example of the, the little things about GIMP that I find kind of frustrating. Um, 
So, you know, it's got some UI issues. That being said, it's got all of the standard stuff that you need. Um, so, you know, it is a viable option. Um, much like Photoshop, the GIMP is also pretty good for photo editing and digital painting. Um, so it's one application that you can use for most of your image editing needs. Um, unlike Photoshop, it is completely free and it is open source. Um, so, you know, it's free. Try it. I would certainly encourage people to try the GIMP out. You may like it. Um, the GIMP also has some limited amount of animation support, uh, which I'm going to briefly take a look at here. Uh, over in this box here we have layers. Um, I'm just going to add a couple. Um, probably should have given it a white background, so I'll do that. Um, in case people are wondering, the, the layer new layer dialog keeps appearing on my other screen, which I'm not recording, which is why I'm dragging it over. Um, so, you know, if, if I, uh, just a quick demonstration of how animation in the GIMP works. Um, if I draw some stuff. Um, Alright, so I'm going to draw a few of these, uh, just little squiggles here, and just, just so I can kind of show you what the animation is going to look like. Um, or rather, how it works. Uh, so I'm going to go to Filters, and I'm going to pick Animation. Uh, just hit playback, um, and then play. And yeah, this is just just a bunch of squiggles, so it doesn't really matter. Um, now, so let's say I want to zoom in. Uh, I go over here and zoomed in one time, so I hit two times, and no, that just makes it faster, uh, which is a little funny because I can also make it faster here. Um, so. For working with pixel art, particularly with small sprites, um, if you want to see bigger pixels uh, with the GIMP, good luck. I'm not sure there's any way to do it, really. If I enlarge this, it doesn't actually make the animation bigger. Um, so as animation tools go, uh, for pixel art, this isn't the best. Um, in fact, really, I'm not a huge fan of layer-based animation, but, uh, you know, what do you do? It does work. Uh, so if you need something that can handle animation and you need to test your animations out, um, the GIMP can be a way to go. And like I said, it's free, so even if you're using some other software package normally, but you need to work on some animation stuff, you can always fire up the GIMP, do your animations there, and be done with it. Um, so, Krita. Um, now, as somebody who's used to Photoshop, I find Krita's interface very pleasant. Um, so if you look around, you'll notice it's got this dark theme right now. You can change that um, to whatever you want. Uh, I'm actually quite fond of the dark theme because it sort of highlights the art you're working with. Um, so visually, I find that very pleasing and also handy because it draws my attention to what I'm doing as opposed to the application around it, which is not really what I'm... It's not really my main focus, right? So, so it's good to have be able to kind of darken it and look around, and I can do that from within the application. It actually uses this theme by default, um, which I think is was a very good idea. Um, much like GIMP and Photoshop, uh, Krita is also good for digital painting, and it's pretty good for photo editing. Um, although you'll probably find that GIMP and Photoshop have more features as far as photo editing goes. Uh, that being said, for digital painting, um, I find that it's actually superior to Photoshop. Um, Krita is also free, um, and it is also open source. And uh, for everything here that is free, uh, I will provide download links in the description. So uh, check there at the end of the video, um, and I will have links to GIMP and Krita and Pixel Editor. Um, so and now, that, now the one downside here is uh, Krita requires a certain amount of setup to really get it to a point where you're in a good pixel art workflow. Um, so quick spoiler, I'm going to be doing a second tutorial very, very shortly on how to set up Krita to do pixel art. Um, what you're looking at right now is Krita as I've set it up for pixel art work. Um, by default, it's more set up for digital painting. It's not too hard to change it, and fortunately it's got uh, something called workspaces, um, which you can switch between, so you can change it between painting, pixel art, etc., um, much in the way Photoshop does. Um, 
Now, see, see the one the one major issue with Krita is that there is not currently any animation support. Now, as I understand it, there is work being done on an animation plugin, although it's hard to say when exactly that will really be finished. Um, I don't really know what it's going to look like. Um, although, given their attention to user interfaces, I would assume it would probably end up being fairly intuitive and easy to use. So that's Krita. Um, Next one I'm looking at is Pixel Editor. Um, so, as I mentioned before, Pixel Editor is an open source pixel art program. Um, unlike the others here, it is not particularly quite ready for prime time. I find that it's missing a few basic tools that you would expect, like line tool, rectangle, you know, sort of all the basic things other than the pencil. Um, you know, in general, this program is nifty, and it's got some really neat features to it, but on the other hand, it's not quite ready for prime time, so I can't completely recommend it. Um, it's still being developed. Uh, it's something that's worth keeping an eye on, and uh, frankly, the reason I'm showing it here is because, well, two reasons. One, it's small enough to be intuitive, and two, it has pretty good animation interface that's frankly better than any of the other ones that I've looked at. Um, so it is noteworthy how nice it is for animation. Um, so Pixel Editor, uh, like GIMP and Krita, is free and open source. Um, you can download it from the link that is in the description for this video. Um, let's take a look at the animation support, since that's really the thing that, that uh, I want to get into with this one. Um, so, if you notice here, let's get rid of this layer that I imported. Um, I've got this frame. Um, I'm just going to go draw some junk here, add a new frame, draw some more junk. I think I put it in the wrong place. There's another one. More junk. There's another frame. Let me put some more junk there. Um, so, First off, uh, if you go down and look at these uh, animation frames, you'll notice it's doing this thing called onion skinning, um, which if I check this box here, uh, it will look, and th this is a feature in graphic scale and, uh, and pro motion, which I'll be showing in a second as well. Um, but it's kind of nice because your uh, current frame will be in whatever color that you pick. The frame before it, will be in this color here, which in this case is red, and the frame after will be blue. Um, so you can compare your frames uh, as you're working, which is really nice if you're trying to do animation. Um, it will give you a much better reference to work with. Uh, the other thing you can do here is you can shorten and lengthen the amount of time these frames take. Um, you can hit the play button. Um, you can loop it if you want. Um, so I'm just going to stop it here. But uh, so it, you know, it's a pretty handy feature. Um, I am quite fond of this. I hope it gets a little further. You know, right now the one of the issues that I have with the animation support is, as far as I can tell, there's really no way to move a frame if you don't like it. I'm clicking here, I'm dragging, nothing happens. Um, which, if you put a frame in the wrong place. Um, and then you decide you want to move it. Well, you really can't do that, so then you have to go in, create a new frame. Um, hopefully you put it in the right spot. Uh, then you go to select the whole thing. Uh, I hit Control A, but here's another problem. Um, there's no select all hotkey. So, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of things that are missing. Um, you know, even here, it's a little bit difficult for me to select the entire image. Um, and I don't even know where that box went. It's just disappeared. So, you know, it needs some work. Um, but if they can work out some of the issues, the interface is good, the animation is excellent. Um, and I would say it could be, in my opinion, the perfect pixel editor in the future. So, something to keep an eye on. Um, graphic scale is the next one I'm looking at. Um, I'll be honest, I find this interface very sort of 1990s and kind of clunky looking. Um, not a huge fan of the way it works. Um, it's got animation stuff down here, uh, which, you know, 
add this funny little button here. You can add frames um, and switch between them. So it does have animation support. Now the free version, uh, which I'm using right now, will not save as animated GIFs. Um, so, you know, the question is, how can I go about saving these things? And I'm just going to test this out right here just to see what happens when I attempt to save an animation as something other than a GIF. Here's another issue. Um, the tools are a little obtuse. So I'm trying to click on this pencil tool. I hit normal. Uh, what the pencil tool is not doing is giving me a pencil to work with. Um, so here we go. Here's another pencil looking thing which I'll click on. Here we go. Alright, so I'm going to go here, and now I've got a two-frame hideous little animation. Um, I will hit Save As. Uh, and let's say I save this as a PNG uh, with Alpha Channel, because why not, and then uh, save it. Um, take a quick look in my Documents folder. Yeah, so it saved it as two different images, um, which is fine. Um, in this case, you can import from multiple files. So if you do this and you save it as multiple images, well, you can import them and you can order them. Um, so at least, you know, you can bring in your images. Now, this is another program that, uh, while I find the interface somewhat clunky, um, if you get to the point where you need to work on animations, particularly testing and editing them. Um, this is a good program to work with because it can load your animations in and then it can save them correctly and play them. And I believe somewhere in here even is an onion skin feature, um, which is what I showed you previously with the, the pixel editor program. Um, so last but not, uh, I guess one other thing. Uh, once again, I'm using the free edition. Uh, I believe it's 20 or $30 for the the full edition, which will also save your animations as animated GIFs. Um, if you don't want to pay this, you can always just save it off as a bunch of PNGs, then load them in as GIMP layers and save them all as an animated GIF from there, if you're even working with animated GIFs. Um, generally speaking, if you're making pixel art for a computer program, um, you're probably want to, going to want to produce a sheet. Um, I am not sure if this has a way to take a bunch of animation frames and create one sheet out of them. Um, the only program that I am aware of here that I'm going over that does that is ProMotion, um, which I will get to in a moment. Um, so finally, graphic scale, uh, just to summarize, interface, kind of old and clunky, uh, not particularly intuitive. I don't know what some of these things do. Uh, there's some animation tools here, um, and this toolbar, you know, I can kind of guess, uh, but, you know, there's two pencil. I don't know what this is here, <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, along with the clunky interface, I find it a little busy, um, you know, so we've got this animation tools here, probably would be better if they were down maybe here by the animation stuff, you know, at least you can rearrange them, um, but, you know, if I try to take these art tools, um, and put them here, I get this weirdness. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you can kind of arrange it better, which I would recommend, um, to, you know, make it more like sort of a typical dockable interface that you're used to, but then I get down here, and then this won't really arrange very well. There we go. Kind of works. <laughs> um, so, not too bad. Um, Still, I'm not particularly a fan. Uh, I don't find it very well labeled. Um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't really give me a very good overview of what it does just by looking at it. So, um, finally, one other program, ProMotion. Um, once again, got a little bit of clunk, although I find it's a little bit better than graphic scale in those terms. Um, so let's see. Uh, ProMotion also has animation support, um, so if I want to go down here um, and say animation, insert frames, I'm going to create an animation. Yes, sure. Uh, let's add three frames. Um, now, I am 
using the evaluation version of ProMotion, um, which I downloaded to do, do this demo. I believe it expires in 30 days, so I don't think there's really a free alternative, or a, rather a free version of ProMotion. Once you're done with your 30 days, my understanding is it stops being able to save files. Um, ProMotion, I think, is about 70 bucks, maybe 80. I don't remember exactly. Not super cheap, certainly a lot cheaper than Photoshop in the long run, but also way more expensive than Graphics Gale and, of course, anything that's free. Um, so ProMotion kind of lets you page through the frames this way. Now, I'm not a big fan of this, this little bar down here because, you know, it says here this is how many frames, but there's no real uh, division. I don't know, you know, if I click on a certain spot, I can't bring up a certain particular frame. I have to drag it. Um, and then look over at the left and see what frame it's on. Um, but, you know, at least these controls here are intuitive. Uh, the palette editor is a little bit odd. Um, defaults to RGB, which, for reasons that I will get into later, as a pixel artist, particularly if you're just getting started, don't use RGB. Um, it's just not a great way to pick colors as far as really not how the human eye works or the brain. Um, so I switched over to HSB. Now, this is the hue slider, and the way the sliders work in this program is it shows you the color, the, the color that you're going to get by sliding to it, rather than showing that color that you're on in some other spot. So in order to even see what hue I'm on, I have to adjust this saturation here. Um, I would prefer if the hue were just bright, and then I could adjust it and see a final result somewhere else. Um, so, all in all, uh, the interface for this program is, once again, it's a little bit clunky. I think graphic scale is kind of worse. For pixel art, it is probably the best and most full-featured. As I understand it, it is capable of saving out animations as sheets, which, if you do get to the point where you're anim animating stuff, that's going to be pretty nice. Um, so, it is something to consider, but... I will not be using this one because it costs money, and if people are following my tutorials, I don't want to force them to pay anything. Um, although, just to reiterate, um, you can follow along in any editor that you want. The principles are the same. So, um, so finally, I, I'm going to go over what I feel would be the hypothetical perfect pixel editor. Um, I would like to see something with as many features as Photoshop or Krita or GIMP um, or ProMotion for that matter. Um, I would love to see it be free and open source. Uh, doesn't cost anything. Uh, generally means that the development won't be abandoned um, if you know a company should happen to fail. Uh, I would like the interface to be intuitive. Um, along the lines of Krita and Photoshop, which I fe feel are fairly exemplary in this way. Um, in addition to that, I'd like good animation support, um, something like we see here in Pixel Editor, uh, with the ability to see individual frames and adjust them so you really know what it is you're working with. So, hypothetical perfect Pixel Editor will be full featured, it would have an intuitive interface, um, it would have good support for animation, that includes making sprite sheets the way ProMotion does, um, and it would be free and open source. Um, so finally, my, my pick for the pixel editor I will be using for at least the first part of this tutorial series before we get to animation is Krita. Um, just because I like the interface, it just works for me. It is very, very configurable, um, and I will be doing a second video very shortly on how to set up sort of the default Krita and set it up so you can work on pixel art easily um, and get a good workflow. Um, because it's not, it, out of the box it isn't particularly configured for pixel art, um, but since it is so easy to modify it, it's easy to get to that point. Um, you know, finally, I, I just find it fairly familiar. The interface works for me. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, once again, all the options, uh, Photoshop, um, intuitive, also good for digital painting, uh, has animation support, not that great, uh, also holy crap, it is expensive. Um, option two is the GIMP. Um, 
clunky interface. Um, good for photo editing and digital painting in addition to pixel art. Uh, it is free and open source, um, and it has animation support, although of the editors that I showed you, uh, honestly, it's probably about the worst in terms of usability for animation. Third option, Krita. Um, I find the interface to be intuitive. Um, it is also very good for digital, editing, digital painting and pretty good for photo editing. Um, it is free and open source. Um, it does not currently support animations, although that may be a part later. So uh, if you do decide to go with Krita, um, you will lose out on that for now. Um, but for, as I said, the first part of the tutorial series, you're really not going to miss it. Um, finally, the other disadvantage is it's going to require a little bit of setup, probably no more than about 10 minutes. Um, and then after that, your workflow flow will be good to go. Um, so the next option is Pixel Editor, um, which I'm showing mostly because I really, really love the way animation works on here. Um, apart from that, uh, it's intuitive, but there just aren't quite enough tools for it to be really ready to go. Um, so, one to keep an eye on, not there yet. Uh, then there's graphic scale. Um, I find the interface to be a little clunky again. It doesn't cost very much, if anything at all. Um, if you want animated GIF saving support, then you have to pay, but it's only like 30 bucks, so it's probably not that big of a deal. And uh, if you can't afford that, well, there are other ways to convert your image sets into animated GIFs. Um, so, uh, graphic scale is a decent option if you can work with the interface. I really can't. Um, finally, ProMotion. Um, interface is a bit clunky. Uh, it supports saving animations as sprite sheets, which none of these other programs do, and I find that would be very nice, at least, you know, especially as a program, as a software developer. Um, when I'm writing a game, I prefer just to get one sheet as opposed to a gigantic pile of PNG files as for uh, animations. Um, so the animation support is good. Um, kind of expensive, and the doesn't really have a free version of all, at all. It's got a trial version, which is a little bit limited and only works for 30 days. Um, so at least you'll have time to try it out and decide if you like it. Um, but after that, it's either pay or you're out of luck. Um, so that's it. Uh, in conclusion, I'm using Krita. You can pick whatever you want. Uh, my next tutorial will be how to set Krita up uh, for a nice, pleasant pixel art workflow. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm Bart Kelsey with Open Game Art. Uh, as is customary on YouTube, like and subscribe. Um, and finally, uh, Open Game Art is running a continuing Patreon campaign, so if you like really anything about Open Game Art, if you like the site, if you like these videos, um, hop on there and uh, toss a few bucks our way. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again.